So, growing up, my first exposure to Japanese pro wrestling was uh, a series of pay-per-views that the UWFI ran in North America in the early 90s. Um, these ads were pretty hokey, but they'd always say, it's real, it's real. You know, this was a time period before MMA was really a thing. Prior to UFC 1, uh, Valley Tudo, which is the predecessor sport to MMA, existed in Brazil and underground in the U.S., but it wasn't widely known about. So, you know, for me, this just looked real. It was exciting, just two guys battling it out until there was a winner. I was just hooked. Um, and then a, a little later in life, the UFC does happen, and I just fall in love with them. And I can remember watching, you know, the Dan Severns and Stefan Bonner's The World, and I couldn't get enough of it. And you know what I mean? MMA and pro wrestling are really the same thing. The only difference is that in MMA, the finishes are worked. So since before we even started promoting, I've wanted to bridge the gap between MMA and pro wrestling and run a UWFI style show, like with the full rule set, point system and everything. There just wasn't a huge market for shoot style pro wrestling. It was still happening in Japan and the WXW was running shoot style shows in Germany, but there was just this huge void in the North American scene. So then GCW starts running these blood sport shows and they're great. I mean, especially the Dan Severn versus Chris Dickinson match, the first one really got me hooked. But it's not exactly UWFI style either because there's no ropes in blood sport, so that means there's no rope breaks, and that really kind of changed the flow of the match. So I just pulled the trigger on it last year, um, and I put out a tweet at like 3 a.m. on a Thursday, like, hey, if we ran a UWFI show, would you guys be interested, would you come? Uh, and it got a huge response on Twitter. So we put together the first Fighting Spirit Heavyweight Grand Prix, uh, and we used the full UWFI rules, point system and all, uh, to our knowledge, and I had a couple of wrestling historians tell me the same thing. It was literally the first time the UWFI rule set the full thing had been used in North America in 25 years. And that was pretty cool. You know, the show was great, and it was by far the most hype and publicity we'd ever gotten for anything we've done. So it helped us grow a lot, and you know, we had a lot of wrestlers who just loved doing it. So we decided to make UWFI rules a, a signature thing, something we could use as our calling card. Uh, that said, uh, for some of the shoot style purists, I do know that our bouts look a little bit different than old school UWFI bouts. Uh, we've modernized them, so you're going to see more things like Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Um, and there's a heavier emphasis on striking. Uh, and that's just because some of these styles of fighting, especially like Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, were not widely known when the UWFI was running. So they were a lot of catch wrestling, and we still have that, and we still have grappling but we've also placed an emphasis on the bouts being short and explosive. Lots of striking and powerful suplexes, and I think it holds people's attentions because you really never know when the match is going to end. It's not the traditional pro wrestling setup where there's a series of near falls. The finish can literally come out of nowhere. And the reception to it all has been incredible. It's something that I'm incredibly proud of. I think we've done a great job of, and I think we've played our own small part in helping to re resurrect the popularity of shoot style wrestling. Um, and you know, it's still heavily influenced by the old UUFI, but I, I like to think that we're more than just a cover band or a tribute act. I, I really think Paradigm UWFI is coming into its own as a style, its own little unique niche of pro wrestling. <laughs>